Nature's most terrifying predator is the one you can feel, but not see. While Hollywood tends to glorify the over-the-top, incredibly loud dinosaur attacks like Rexy roaring over a kill for no reason, or life on our planet's Tyrannosaurus bellowing to give away its position before lunging, nature values efficiency over cinematic choreography. Turns out, scaring your prey in the opposite direction is counterproductive, unless it's part of an ambush, but we'll get into that. In this video, we'll cover which predatory dinosaurs would really be the most terrifying threats to an unarmed human and why including a deep dive on how theropod dinosaurs could be much more intelligent and crafty than most people think. Let's get started. The most obvious pick would be dromaeosaurs, informally referred to as raptors. This group of small to medium predators belong to the Maniraptoriforms, a clade that includes modern birds, and boasts one of the most famous dinosaurs in history. The turkey-sized Velociraptor lived in Cretaceous Mongolia, and lent its name to the much larger Jurassic Park raptors. The Jurassic Park series popularized the idea of human-sized, highly intelligent hunters, which to be fair sounds quite scary, but was there any merit to that? Real-life raptors not only reached the size of their fictional counterparts, but they exceeded them in some cases. Jurassic Park Velociraptors are about 4 meters long and weigh around 150 kilograms, comparable to lions in mass. Not bad. The Mongolian Achillobator, however, was 4 to 5 meters long and weighed between 200 and 300 kilograms, up to double the Jurassic Park raptor's weight. Utah Raptor was even bigger, with the largest individuals at close to 6 meters and over 400 kilograms. Now we're in grizzly bear territory. Their size, sharp teeth, and hooked hand claws were formidable enough, but add in the long sickle claw on each foot that would have been used to pin you down while you were being eaten alive, and you've got Mesozoic Nightmare Fuel. A human caught without serious weaponry would be easy prey for a big dromaeosaur, and we're big enough to be an actually tempting meal. The horror isn't purely physical either. Recent research by Kai Kaspar's team indicates that reports of primate-level neuron density in non-avian dinosaurs may have been exaggerated, but they argue that dromaeosaurs would have been roughly comparable to many modern birds in their cognitive capacities. Other theropods in the new study, like tyrannosaurs, fell below birds and above crocodiles and lizards in terms of estimated neuron count. There's a lot to unpack here. At first it sounds like theropods might not have been intelligent hunters, but not exactly. For the purposes of this video, we'll define intelligence as the ability to process and deliberately utilize information. How we determine intelligence in animals is controversial at best, with some favoring the encephalization quotient method that uses brain size relative to body size, while others look to neuron count as the better indicator. Both techniques put non-avian dinosaurs as broadly comparable to living non-avian sauropsids like crocodiles and lizards. Non-theropods are on the lower end, non-maniraptoriform theropods are higher, with T. rex at nearly bird level, and non-avian maniraptoriforms are right in there with most birds. However, it turns out that neuron count is not as closely associated with higher cognition as expected. As pointed out by Darren Nation in his excellent tetrapod zoology blog post, giraffes have extremely high telencephalic neuron counts but don't demonstrate extraordinary intelligence. And mammals like cetaceans have much higher neuron counts than humans without correspondingly superior cognitive function. It seems like we may be back to lacking a universal predictor for intelligence, which again just shows us how little we know. With that in mind, let's look at what it would mean for theropods to be, quote-unquote, crocodile smart, remembering that dromaeosaurs are expected to score notably above their living Sukian relatives. A 2021 study found the following. The recent surge of reptilian cognition studies has uncovered that reptiles display a range of cognitive skills not inferior to those documented in birds and mammals. Reptiles exhibit fast and flexible learning, long-term memory, spontaneous problem-solving abilities, quantity discrimination, and even social learning. What does that mean in a practical sense? For one thing, cooperative hunting is very much on the table. Coordinated attacks have been observed in multiple crocodilian species thanks to Vladimir Denay's exhaustive research efforts. Johnston's crocodiles will herd groups of fish towards one another. American alligators do the same thing in groups of up to 60, with some driving the fish towards the others and letting them eat before swapping places. Feel free to pause to read these accounts in greater detail. Mugger crocodiles swim in coordinated circles around fish to force them into bunches and then take chunks out of them. Saltwater crocodiles have been documented to use threat displays to drive pigs into ambushes set by other crocodiles and then share the prey with the ambushers. Complex parental care is also clear. 
Crocodilians build and defend nests over periods of months, with some species exhibiting post-hatching defense and feeding as well. Mugger crocodiles and American alligators show tool use, again documented by Vladimir Dene, by placing certain sticks on their snouts during the mating season of local birds. Those birds try to build their nests with those sticks, and many fall for the trap, becoming tasty snacks. Green iguanas live in groups, groom one another, and form leadership-based hierarchies, with the leaders making sure that each member of the group makes it across dangerous terrain during long periods of travel. Male iguanas have been documented leaping out in front of predators to defend their female siblings. Monitor lizards are another group of incredibly intelligent reptiles. Rock monitors can count up to six, and Nile monitors work in pairs to steal eggs. One acts as a decoy to lure away the adult crocodile, while the other chomps away. They can both end up getting the spoils as well. Tree monitors have demonstrated play behavior by tearing leaves to bits in captivity as a form of stimulation. Kraken, a Komodo dragon at the Smithsonian Zoo, is well known for playfully tugging at objects in the pockets of keepers, engaging in tug-of-war, and showing high degrees of non-predatory curiosity. I've linked another tetrapod zoology post going into these examples in depth. Crocodile monitors display interspecies bonding and interaction with humans to the point where human interaction may be preferred over food, and the same is true for emerald tree skinks. Check out Tom Crutchfield and Clint's Reptiles for more details. Play behavior has also been seen in turtles and crocodiles, in the form of object manipulation, playing with dripping water, wrestling, piggyback rides, and even surfing. A 2019 literature review even indicated that reptiles are capable of the following emotions. Anxiety, stress, distress, excitement, fear, frustration, pain, and pleasure. So much for the myth of the dull, sluggish lizard. How does that relate to dromaeosaurs? Well, even if we ignored bird intelligence entirely, we'd at least expect dromaeosaurs to display prey herding, the ability to set ambushes, investigate new objects, play with their food, and even lay traps by predicting the behavior of their victims. On a more wholesome note, perhaps you'd be able to form a lifelong bond with a theropod if you raised one from infancy, assuming it didn't kill you by accident, of course. The potential for dinosaur horror goes even higher when we look at behaviors in modern birds. This comes with the disclaimer that the most derived birds are more neurologically advanced than any dromaeosaur, but as we've seen, non-avian reptile intelligence is criminally understudied and underrated. I wouldn't count out complexity if I were you. Shrikes are a group of passerine birds from North America, Eurasia, and Africa, known for being both adorable and absolutely vicious little serial killers of birds. Males impale lizards and other birds on nearby spikes to use as food storage and to impress females. It's a very specific behavior and doesn't scale up very well, but similarly gruesome activities may have occurred in the past. Another speculative behavior would be vocal mimicry, designed to lead to prey capture, such as what we see in the modern drongo. These birds mimic alarm calls to scare rivals away from food, and then swoop in to feast after their mark flees the scene. Vocal activity on that level in non-avian theropods is unsupported by current knowledge, Alan. But the discovery of a larynx in the Thyreophorin pinacosaurus indicates that complex vocal communication may be a basal trait in all dinosaurs. In terms of tool creation, as we see in birds solving food-based puzzles, non-avian theropods likely wouldn't have had the selective pressure motivating them to use external objects when their teeth, claws, and overpowering physical prowess weren't up to the job. But hey, it's possible. Another group of predatory theropods that would be a nightmare for humans is the Abelosauridae, a short-armed, long-legged clade affectionately referred to as murder sausages. Famous members like Acosaurus and Carnotaurus showed that they had long, rotund bodies with tiny nubs of arms. Also, shameless plug here, Hetoresco will be doing the cover art for my Paleo Fantasy series Extinction. Keep an eye out for an upcoming cover reveal. While unpublished giant abelosaurs exist, like the long-teased Titanovenator of Kenya that supposedly surpasses six tons, most were in the half-ton to two-ton territory. The largest described genus, Pycnonemosaurus, is estimated around 9 meters long and between 3.2 and 3.6 tons as a subadult. Abelosaurus had tall, short skulls with fast and weak bites, ideal for taking down small prey which, relatively, would include adult humans. Their speed and size put them in the perfect position to bite your head off, and it may have been difficult to hear them coming. A 2018 study found that large carnivorous theropods had a unique foot structure that diffused the impact of their steps. The study stated that the seismic wave motion camouflage would be useful to hide actual approach velocity, and could even produce the perception that the predator is not approaching. Speaking of abelis or jump scares, has anyone ever played the DVD menu game from Disney's Dinosaur? Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> 
The next group of terrifying theropods from a human predation perspective is the Alliuramans. This subset of tyrannosaurs lived in eastern North America and Central Asia in the late Cretaceous, and appear very different from the public image of tyrannosaurs. Rather than the bulky, robust, mega-tank build favored by tyrannosaurines like T. rex, Tarbosaurus, and Zhushang Tyrannus, Alliuramans were slender, long-snouted, and freakishly fast. The larger of the two genera, Chenjosaurus, was about 6 meters long and weighed over 700 kilograms as a subadult. Based on its similarly proportioned relative Appalachiosaurus, Chenjosaurus would have had a top speed of at least 55 kilometers an hour, or 34 miles per hour. That's 25% faster than the absolute top speed ever recorded for a human, and it would have been able to sustain it for a much longer period. We don't have direct evidence for gregariousness in this taxon, but considering tyrannosaurs are considered to be in the more intelligent side of non-aving dinosaurs, Complex hunting behaviors like ambushes and coordinated decoys are probable. Their skulls were about a meter long, the perfect size for ripping off human limbs or crushing your skull. And as a Tyrannosaur, Chenjosaurus would have had incredible senses. Forget running from this thing, you wouldn't even be able to hide from it. Alliuramus itself would be comparably deadly, although slightly smaller. It's only half a ton, which would be little comfort to anyone trying to survive an attack from the creature. Yes, there are theropods that on an absolute scale may be capable of dealing out more damage. Nobody's going to argue that any member of these groups has the raw firepower of a megatheropod, but they would be far more likely to attack humans. I'm not saying that megatheropods would turn up their nose at a tasty primate-flavored snack. Predators today eat small prey items all the time, why turn down easy energy after all? But we wouldn't be in their optimal calorie versus effort range. For our purposes, Dromaeosaurs, Abelosaurs, and Alliuramans would be the most dangerous predatory dinosaurs as adults. Much of the same logic applies to juveniles of larger species, like Allosaurus or Tyrannosaurus. We shouldn't forget terror birds, though. Their largest representatives were comparable to the biggest Dromaeosaurus in overall mass, but even taller at the head. Powerful necks supported beaks capable of crushing large mammalian prey, and their roided-out ostrich legs allowed for speeds in excess of 48 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour. Thick claws would have pinned down victims that somehow survived the sledgehammer beak blow. A human's best chance to escape an angry forest racket would be to run in zigzags, as a 2016 study indicated that terror birds had poor agility and were built to run extremely quickly in straight lines. If serial killer Big Bird ever tried to live out a nightmare on Sesame Street, now you know how to maybe get out alive. One more group deserves a place on the nightmare podium, Megaraptorans. Slim, medium-sized theropods, Megaraptors had long jaws and long, powerful arms with claws that could disembowel a human as easily as filleting a fish. Mape Macrothorax was the biggest of the group at about 3 metric tons. No big deal, just three times the size of the world record polar bear with claws as long as a human forearm. As subscriber Thaxosaurian put it, Megaraptors were big enough to go inside houses, paired with big arms that are armed with large claws, which could rip and tear a human apart like Doom Slayer with Freddy Krueger claws. I had actually forgotten about Megaraptorans before I made that community post, so thank you for reminding me about this awesome group of animals. What do you think the most dangerous theropods would be to humans? Any other awesome groups that I forgot or that you think got shafted? Let me know in the comments. And also let me know what non-theropods you think would be too risky to approach. I really enjoyed making this video and I'd love to make more, blending awesome bro topics backed up by real science. So I'm open to suggestions of what you'd like to see. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.